Hello, this is Craig. I'm back with my Langmeyer Systems Titan 25T, a CNC press brake. And after putting together yesterday's video, I realized there's a lot of mistakes in it, so I'm going to reshoot it. But I'm going to make some changes to it, so we're going to see a little bit better performance, hopefully, today. But we're going to basically replicate the same experiment we did yesterday, which is take a piece of this uh, hot rolled steel and bend it, and then do a correction, create the, uh, the overbend or underbend correction to it. We're going to verify that with a, another bend on this three and a half inch piece. Then we're going to put this set, this seven piece in and seven inch piece in and do it this way. So we're going to do that same thing. I we, uh, there was um, the, I looked at the video yesterday. I was doing it with a GoPro. I had the GoPro sticking out here, and it created a really horrible um, screen capture because uh, it was a little bit out of focus. So I'm doing a little something different today. We'll see how this goes. Um, I do need to drive it with a regular mouse so that you can see the cursor on your screen when I go and zoom in on what's showing you on the screen here. Um, but um, So let's go over some of the things that, uh, that came out of it. First of all, there's kind of this unwritten rule, or maybe it's a guideline, is that the width of your die here should be 8x times the width of your material. So this is 0.18 inches thick. And eight times that is 1.44. So we are going to uh, move my die over here. And one of these four-way dies has four different widths on it. And I've chosen the 1.378 die, uh, die width over here, which is this side here. Um, so I have the machine turned on. I just turned it on. I haven't done anything yet. So the first thing I'm, you, you'll notice down here is there's a pink uh, halo around the home, home machine. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And what that does is it brings the RAM back up and, and gets it back into the home position. And then after this, we'll go ahead and home the uh, back gauge, which is back down in here. Okay, so we're gonna go back over to the back gauge tab. And you'll see that this one's got a blue halo around it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and home that. So that sends the back gauge back in. Um, X is this way on the back gauge and R is up and down. So a couple things we're gonna change over here as well on the settings, we're gonna change the dwell time, which is defaults to three seconds. We're gonna change the bend speed. It defaults to five inches per minute. We're gonna change that to 15. So we're gonna to get to see this thing run, you know, kind of it said it's maximum speed for bending. Um, so if we come over here to uh, down here at this part of the screen, we have bend speed and jog speed. Jog speed is how fast the ramp comes down when you, when you want to manually jog it here. And I have that at 15. And bid speed is at five inches per minute. So if you click on this field, I'm going to type in 15. If you type in a number greater than 15, it goes back. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's say I want it to be 20. All right, it figures out that's that's uh, bigger than the maximum. So it goes back down to 15. So that's the maximum bend speed. And then under the dwell time, you come over here to the settings tab. And you have this automatic clamp to bend dwell. I'm going to change this to one second. And we'll come back over here to create bend. Now, the bends that I did yesterday were with kind of with the wrong width of the die. So I'm going to delete this, this bend that I created yesterday, which was called 0.18 HRS90. Now, on this screen here, there's no button or no trash can icon. I did figure out, though, if you click on this pencil icon, it brings up a, a dialog box to change the value of the title. If you just cancel this, this checkbox turns into a trash can. So we hit that trash can and it's going to say, yes, I want to delete that, that bin. So now that bin's not there anymore. That's the same over here on the run tab. So here's my test I created yesterday. So I'm going to hit this, this thing to change the title and I'm going to cancel out of that dialog and I'm going to hit this, the changes to a trash can. This is, <clears throat> this is kind of poor uh, <laughs> UI development, but uh, but we'll just live with it. Um, okay, 
So we want to create this bin. So we're going to start from scratch over here. And you see that at, this is the default settings. So we're using an, um, the extreme gooseneck die, which is down here. There's only one of these. And we're using a four-way die. So you can see down here, I have the four-way die and I'm going to choose this 1.378 inch die with a riser. And this is what I have set up in my machine. And, and I, have co I have hot rolled steel. Okay, my material thickness here is 0.181. And my width, my bin width is 3.5. And we're going to change the under bit to zero. We're going to do, we're going to do a bend and we're at 90 degrees. And for our back gauge, our, our R position, which is the height of the back gauge, I want to set that to zero. Now, as part of the setup for the way that this operates, I, I set the stops and everything on the back gauge so that the fingers that come up from the back gauge just barely clear the back of this of this die back here. And so um, the I want to do an inch and a half on the X position. So if I want to, I'm going to have a flange, I'm going to bend a flange in this piece. And I want this flange when it comes up at 90 degrees to be one and a half inches. So we'll do one and a half here. And we'll see that. So punch the material clearness is the when the when the die comes down, when the punch comes down, it gets a clearance height off of here, which allows me to put it in. So that's 0.05. That's the default. That's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna save this over here. And it, and then over here I'm gonna say load into current the current program. So yeah, I don't I don't know why it adds it to the current program. I deleted that. Let me get let me let me delete all this out of here first. Actually, this is kind of strange about this interface. I want to save this my bend over here as a as a new bend. So we're gonna call this. We're gonna click. I don't even know why that's there either. So we're gonna call this um, point one eight. Uh, HRS 90, we'll just call it that. Okay. Hit okay. So that gives us a name up here and we'll hit save over here. We'll come back to the run menu. We're going to do a new one over here. I'm going to add bend. And this is the one I just created. So I click on that and I hit add to bend, add bend to my program. And then I have an untitled program up here, so I'm going to change this over to 0.18 test. We'll do that there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save that right now. Okay, so we're ready to do a bend on this. Because uh, we've homed the machine, we've homed the back gauge. We'll go ahead and hit the run. The or hit the run. And you also notice down here the dwell to change to one second, so that's good. So I hit the program and it, that there's a confirmation dialog. Do I want to proceed? And I'm on step one of my my program called 0.18 test. So I hit the yes there. It moves the back gauge to the right position, which is going to be an inch and a half back from the center of my of of my die. And also there was a comment on one of my videos that they, they don't think the die the punch was aligned to the die. We actually verified that this morning. And yes, it is actually done Done that. It's done pretty well for that. First thing I'm going to check is the fact that, that these parts were cut off and to be square to begin with. All right. And I'm just looking at this here. And it does look like it's square. So this is the, this is the manufactured edge where I think that this edge over here was a sheared edge. So we're going to put this back in the back. But my fingers are a little bit too far apart. So I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to... Put my fingers a little closer together. So I got that there. But if you look up here at the start safety start position, that's where we're starting, but we want to go down to the clamp position. So we have to hold down our our jog. We're coming down to the to the clamp position. 
which is going to be uh, 50 thou above the above the back or the top of the stock. I'm going to hold this in here. Then I'm going to tap my foot pedal twice. And it's going to bring it down and hold it there and dwell for one second. And then it's going to do the bend. Okay, you, you kind of saw that that's a lot faster bend than it was yesterday. So we'll get out our our, um, our angle random finder, which is which is over here. Turn it on. Got that zeroed out, and we're going to measure this up again. And this is saying that we're at ninety six point nine. So this is a little bit this is a little bit different than yesterday. So we're underbent by this is ninety six point six or ninety six point seven. If I move it down here, we're at ninety six point five. So I think we're our desired angle is ninety. We're underbent by six point. Let me see. Let me just get this right. I would think that we're under by. It's hard to say. This is a little bit difficult to take this measurement here. I would say we're underbent by six point eight degrees. So let's go back into that bend, and we'll 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 change we'll edit it here. We'll change this under bend to six point eight. Now what's interesting about this is that this number is different than it was yesterday, and that might have to do with the speed that we're actually bending it, and maybe that has to do with the spring back. I, I don't know. It's, maybe somebody can answer that question for me. All right, so we're ready to bend the other side of this. Now, when I bent this yesterday, I did I did put it in this way. There's a chance that this part of the bend is going to come up and hit my hit my punch, but I, I know that it's not. It's going to just barely clear this little uh, flange cut off the punch. So we'll go ahead and start this again. So we're going to go back to our run. Um, we're going to run the exact same command. Actually, first we're going to check the the fact that. This under bent is now at 6.8, which it is. So we'll hit this button here. And back gauge comes at the right position. And this is already at the uh, clamp position here. So we'll just put this back in here. And we'll go ahead and do this next bend. OK, now it's being held. So our dwell is one second. OK. So now we'll measure this one, and hopefully this is still at. Let's see, if this one's ninety. This one is eighty-nine point seven. All right, so we're off by 0 0.3 degrees. So if I wanted to correct that, we were we're now overbent by 0.3 degrees, so I need to take off 0.3 off of my underbent number. I hope that makes sense. So that number that I put in there on the bend really should be 6. Point, what did I say? 6 and take off 3. It's it's over it's under by 0.3. It's under by Yeah, this is this is pretty hard to hold this on here. Yeah, we're under by, we're over by some number. So we'll take off, we'll take off 0.3. That was 6.8. We'll make it 6.5. Okay. A couple things I didn't bring up before was this tonnage here to, to make this bend required 3.5 tons of force. This is a 25T, so it's 25 tons. Okay. But when you put all these numbers in, what ends up happening is you have this vertical uh, position diagram. It shows you what's actually going to happen. And uh, my question yesterday was, if I bend this piece now with the same settings, will it bend out to 90 degrees because I've done this correction? That's what we're going to verify again today. 
uh, but we're, we're at a very faster speed. So if I come in and change this width here to, this is now, I think this was seven inches. Let me see what that was. I think it's seven. This is 7.7. 7. So I'll put that in there. And when we change this number to 7.7, 7, I don't believe any of these numbers change here, but other than tonnage. So let's verify this. The final bend position is 1.55 minus 1.558. And if I make this like three, 1.558. So it doesn't matter what this, this number here just tells you how much tonnage it's going to require to do this bend. So let's do it. Let's try this out here. So we'll go back over, we'll hit the save here because we did change the underbent number. We're going to go back over to the run menu and we'll see that this is now at 6.5, which is where it was 6.8. So we'll put this guy in here. We'll run the program. And we'll go ahead and hit yes here. So we're at the clamp position already. So we'll put this in there and we're at right in the center of the die. And I want to get on the edge that's that's uh, sheared the right way. I guess it doesn't matter on this piece. Both sides were sheared. So we'll, we're at this position and we'll tap our foot pedal. It's going to come down and it's going to go to the back gauge hold. It's going to go through a one second dwell. <laughs> And we're done there. And we'll come over here and measure it with a machinist square instead. And I can safely say that that is on the money. Let's see if I can get this in the camera this time. This is uh, scarily accurate now. Okay, so. So that's the way that you would uh, end up creating these bends and bending metal at a somewhat accurate, um, accurate way. All right. It's impressive. Okay. Thanks for watching.